G'day, Andrew Durbidge from the Scotch Malt Whiskey Society here in Australia, and you're watching a video called How to Get the Most Out of Your Dram. Now, let's get one thing clear from the start. This is not how to enjoy your dram. How to enjoy your dram is entirely up to you. If you want to add water to it, if you want to add ice to it, if you want to enjoy it with Coke, that's absolutely fine. It's your dram, you've paid for it. Do whatever you need to do or what you like to do in order to enjoy your dram. But this video is how to get the most out of your dram. And there's quite a distinction. Whiskey is not the cheapest drink in the world. Uh, it's a reasonable investment to buy yourself a bottle. And we believe it's very important that you get everything out of it. That all the goodness that's been put into that lovely bottle and that beautiful spirit uh, is enjoyed to its fullest. And so in this little video, we're going to go through the main steps of whiskey appreciation and how to get the most out of your dram. This is the traditional whiskey tumbler. It's a beautiful glass. It's nice to hold. You can put it on the table and you don't knock it over. You can put some decent uh, rocks into that, put some ice or a big spherical uh, sphere of ice or a cube if that's your thing. And that's great for enjoying whiskey. However, it is the worst possible glass for appreciating whiskey. Because when it comes to whiskey appreciation, one of the key elements, as we'll discuss in a moment, is the nose. You want a glass that's going to capture the nose or the aroma or bouquet and deliver it to your nostrils. So when it comes to appreciating whiskey, as opposed to enjoying it, this probably isn't your glass of choice. What you do want is a glass that's going to capture the aromas, concentrate them and focus them towards uh, the rim of the glass and deliver them to your nostrils. Now this is just a very generic spirits taster, as we call it. Works absolutely fine. You're probably uh, very familiar with the Glen Cairn glass, which is now uh, ubiquitous and, and everywhere. Serves its purpose just as well. And of course, also the Society glass. Now this has won a few awards as a, as a fantastic uh, whiskey glass because it, it delivers everything you want in a glass, obviously. Does exactly what we want with the bouquet and the aroma, uh, focuses it to the nose, very pleasant and comfortable to hold. You can warm the glass in your hand. And, uh, and look, it's, it's pretty attractive as well, and also great delivery in, into the mouth. So before you set about appreciating whiskey, make sure you do pour it into the right, side, uh, right type of glass that will do the job for you. So once you've got the right type of glass in your hand, then we can start to look at the four parts of the whiskey appreciation process. The first part of the whiskey appreciation process is to appreciate a whiskey's colour. Colour can tell us so much about the, the whiskey's history. It can give us some clues as to the type of cask that it was matured in, and it can also give us a clue about the whiskey's age. Now I've got two whiskies before me here, very different colour. Uh, if I just give a, a white background to that to, uh, to help you there, you can see there's quite a, quite a difference between the, the two. Now the majority of Scotch whisky uh, produced today is matured in one of two types of cask, uh, the majority of whisky. It's either in an ex-bourbon cask, that is a cask that was previously used in the American bourbon industry, or an ex-sherry cask, uh, a cask that was used for, the, for sherry production. There are lots of other casks used as well, of course, uh, port casks, uh, other wine casks, um, Madeira, French oak, uh, and the like, uh, but they make up a relatively small percentage. Uh, so for the purposes of today's video, we're just going to consider uh, chiefly bourbon and sherry. And the very rough rule of thumb is that a sherry cask will impart significantly more colour to the whisky. These are both single malt Scotch whiskies uh, from the Scotch Malt Whisky Society. Uh, this one is from a bourbon cask. This is from an ex-sherry cask. And you can see the distinction. The second thing that uh, colour can tell us or give us a clue about is the whisky's age. Now, um, again, general rule of thumb, but uh, the more years a whisky spends in the wood, the more colour it will take off. When whisky comes off the stills, when it's first distilled as a spirit, it's actually as clear as water and it takes its colour from the wood. So the rough rule of thumb is the more years in the wood, the more colour it will take on. So sometimes when you, can, when you see a particularly dark whisky, it can be a clue 
that uh, it pr previously came from a sherry cask or that it actually has quite a few years under its belt. It may be an older whiskey. Now, uh, how can you tell if it came from a sherry cask? Well, that comes down to the nose and the palate, which we'll talk about in just a moment. Now there's one red herring in the industry, the one artificial ingredient that the Scotch whisky industry is allowed to use, and that is caramel, caramel coloring, coloring in other words. So there are some brands and some bottles out there where, that use caramel to artificially darken uh, the whisky or to get a consistency of color from batch to batch. If you go down to your local bottle shop and you pick up a bottle of your, your favorite drop, uh, the, the blender or the bottler who produces that wants it to be the same colour, batch in, batch out. So colouring is also used just to get consistency of colour. Now it's important to note that the Scotch Malt Whisky Society does not add caramel to our whiskies. How it comes out of the cask is how it appears in your glass and it's all natural. So colour is very important, don't dismiss it. Anytime you pour yourself a dram, hold it up to the light, look at that colour, take it in and try and interpret what you think you're drinking before you then start to engage your other senses, which is what we move on to next. The second part of the whiskey appreciation process is the smell. That is appreciating the aroma, the bouquet, the scents coming out of your glass. Now, that's an important part of whiskey appreciation. And uh, it's worth just stating that, as you know, we have four primary tastes. Uh, five of you include umami. And yet we are capable of detecting, latest research from 2014, says one trillion different odors. There are 128 different odor molecules that can combine uh, in so many different ways. And the permutations allow humans to experience up to one trillion scents. Uh, so as you can appreciate, there's a lot to be gained out of your glass. So the nose is a very important part of whiskey appreciation, hence the reason we want to use a glass that's going to highlight and focus uh, those uh, aromas into our nostrils. So how do we do it? It's pretty simple. Stick your nose in and breathe in. Now, try something for me. What I'd like you to do is pick up a glass, have a dram, and try smelling it with your mouth closed. It's a nice drop. Now, try that again with your mouth open this time. And when your mouth is open, you actually draw much greater uh, volume of the, the vapors into your nasal cavity, up past your olfactory nerve endings and receptors, and you get a much stronger sense of uh, the, the whiskey's aromas. Now, if a whiskey is tightly locked and you're not getting a lot out of it, there are some tricks you can do. Uh, you can add a few drops of water. We're gonna talk about that in a moment. The other thing you can do is simply just warm the glass in your hand. And after a couple of minutes, uh, that warmth will have increased the temperature of the liquid, which releases some other volatiles uh, that are in the spirit and improves the nose that way. So second part of the whiskey appreciation process, really enjoy all of the scents and the aromas that are coming out for a few reasons. One, because they're very pleasant. And two, uh, they'll also give you a clue as to what's about to come when you, when you come to taste. It's also worth saying that your nose will also identify if there are any flaws or faults in the whiskey. If there's anything untoward in there, if it's been in a, in a contaminated task, cask, say a cask that's been tainted by sulfur, uh, or anything, uh, as I say, undesirable, it's usually your nose that's gonna give that away to you. Happily, uh, what I'm jamming right now is, uh, is a very happy drop. So that's the second part, and we can now move on to part three. The third part of the whiskey appreciation process is the palate. Quite simply, what does it taste like, and what experience does it give to your mouth as you, uh, as you put it in and, and start to enjoy it? It's not just about the flavors, it's also about the textual experience as well. So we talk about mouthfeel. So I always say to people, when you're coming to a dram for the first time, uh, first of all, just introduce yourself. Just, you know, casually come up. You need to shake hands first before you go in for a big hug. So in shaking hands, the first thing I suggest is to take just a little sip at first. Take a small sip of the spirit, bring it onto the front of your tongue, and then move your tongue around your mouth to coat the rest of your, your mouth with the, with the spirit. Lovely drop. So now that we've introduced ourselves to the spirit, 
we can actually go in and, and be a bit more friendly with it. And I suggest the second time round, take a much bigger sip this time. And this time you want to actually move that spirit all around your mouth, to the front and back of your tongue, to the sides, to the pouches of your cheeks, all around your gums. Really coat your mouth so that every part of, of your mouth and your palate and your taste buds can experience what's on offer. That is delicious. Hold it for a good five, 10 seconds if you can, if the alcohol burn doesn't become too overpowering. And it's in that time when you can really start to take in the whiskey's flavors. Uh, Scotch whiskey is made from barley. For me personally, I love to, to taste that barley malt and know that I'm, that I'm drinking a malt whiskey. You should also be looking for things like uh, fruit. Uh, does it offer some citrus? Citrus is a very common mark in, in many whiskies or tropical fruit. Uh, you can also look for that grassiness or those floral herbaceous notes. And if it's a peated whiskey, you should be looking for the smoke and, and, and the peat and the earthiness that comes with, with, with peated whiskies. Those are the flavors. So you're also obviously taking in the flavors as you, as you go through this. But the, the other aspect of it is the mouthfeel, the texture. Um, and uh, some whiskies can be very hot and fiery and aggressive. Some can be, and I don't like using the words, but you know, can obviously be very smooth and soft and delicate. And fragile and a lot of a lot of that has to do with the character and quality of the spirit and also whether it's been chill filtered and that's a very important thing to talk about particularly when we're considering scotch not whiskey society bottlings uh, a lot of whiskies that you get at your your local liquor outlet will have been chill filtered which means they take the spirit the whiskey uh, they chilter it down to a very very low temperature where a lot of the oils and fats that are in the spirit solidify and they get filtered out uh, there's a few reasons for that, which, which we won't go into. Um, but the point being, the Scotch Malt Whiskey Society does not do that. Our whiskies are non-chill filtered. So all the oils and fats, i.e. the flavour and the mouthfeel, are still in the spirit. And we can demonstrate that. Beautiful Society whiskey, oils and fats still in the, in the, in the spirit, and water. And as we know, oil and water doesn't, don't mix. So if I just dribble a little bit of water down the side there, you can actually see that I've separated, well, hopefully you can see, I've actually separated that. And if I put my finger in there, that is now oil on the end of my finger, not coming off. And if I rub it, it's very oily, very slippery, almost soapy in fact. And that is the goodness and flavor uh, and that mouthfeel that is still in a Scotch Malt Whiskey Society bottling. And indeed for most cast strength whiskies, uh, most of the, 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 the bottlers who bottle at cast strength or higher than 46% alcohol by volume uh, do not chill filter. So when you, when you trace those whiskies at those higher strengths and you feel, wow, there's so much more going on here. It seems to be a such more vibrant, dynamic, uh, robust, chewy whiskey. That's the reason. It's because the goodness is still in the dram. So with that uh, taken care of now, we can move on to the fourth part of the whiskey appreciation process. The fourth part of the whiskey appreciation process is the finish. This experience, this whole part of appreciation doesn't end when you swallow your dram. Once you've swallowed the whiskey, you still have residual spirit in your mouth, you still have residual vapors in your mouth and nasal cavity. And uh, it's incredible how many new nuances or flavors and aromas you can actually get from the whiskey in this, this final stage after you've swallowed. And we call that the finish. What is the whiskey's finish? Now, some whiskies can have a very short finish. You swallow the dram, everything evaporates on your mouth. It's gone like that. And you need to rush back for another mouthful. Some whiskies, good whiskies, have a very long finish, one that goes and on and on. Sometimes it'll build and you'll get a crescendo of flavors and, and, and uh, aromas that build in your mouth and in that nasal cavity. And, uh, and that can be a lovely experience. Some whiskies, the finish will bring in uh, and introduce new flavors uh, and aromas that weren't there at first as, as they uh, start to, when it, as a reaction takes place with the oxygen in your mouth. When you've had a whiskey, And swallowed, open your mouth, <clears throat> breathe in, and again, that oxygen will react, release more volatiles, and you'll get a new and different uh, take on the, on the finish. 
and the new flavors that you get as a result. Some whiskies can turn bitter. Sometimes the finish can be unpleasant. It can go in a very astringent direction. So the finish, as I say, is, is, is part of that process. And you've now appreciated your whiskey. You've taken into account the color and you've taken on the clues uh, that the whiskey may, uh, may be giving you as to its provenance and what it was matured in. You've nosed it and you've enjoyed the wonderful aromas that have come through. You've had a taste, you've put it on your palate, you've enjoyed the flavors and the textural experience that it's given you. And once you've swallowed it, you've, you've enjoyed the finish and considered all the new things that it's brought to the experience. Color, nose, palate, finish. The four parts of the whiskey appreciation process. And once you've gone through those, you've got everything you can uh, out of the dram and you've, uh, you've, you've done the right thing by the whiskey. And importantly, and hopefully, the whiskey has done the right thing by you. Now, everything we've talked about so far has been enjoying the whiskey neat. That is straight out of the bottle. We haven't added water yet. And there's a bit to be said about adding water. Some whiskies will actually improve with water. Some will not. Some will actually deteriorate uh, and go backwards very quickly. And it takes a bit of experience and, and, and knowledge to know which whiskies are likely to improve with water uh, and which ones won't. And there's also, of course, personal preference as well. Um, something that has to be said is that if a whiskey is very hot, if it's high in alcohol and you're, you're trying to nose and taste it, and the heat is just too much for you to bear and, and you're not able to cope with it and take the most out of it, then clearly you, know, you need to add a few drops of water to bring it down to a strength that you're comfortable with. It's important to, notice, to know, of course, that when you add a few drops of water or any amount of water, a chemical reaction is taking place. You're changing the whiskey and that water will interact with the volatiles in the spirit and change it. So something I can't deny is if you uh, have a whiskey and you're struggling to get something on the nose, you're struggling to get the aromas out, a few drops of water will make a big difference to the nose uh, and, and release some of that aroma. So if that's uh, something that's an issue, by all means, add a little splash. That was probably more than a little splash. Put your hand on top, give that a swirl, mix it together, and then, wow, much stronger sense of, of those aromas. And uh, different aromas as well. This has actually now opened up and, and gone in, in uh, new directions, interesting directions too, for that matter. And of course, I've also brought the strength down. Um, so if there was, if there was a, a high aggressive burn there earlier, that's now a little bit softer, which allows me to um, take in some of those other characters. But that's a very personal thing. Some people uh, refuse to add water. Some people add it out of, uh, out of habit and, and, and preference immediately. Um, I always say, if you're going to appreciate a dram, try it neat first, uh, make a decision as to whether you think it needs water, uh, and then add a little a few drops at a time. Always be sparing with your water. If it needs to add more, you can add a bit more. But if you add too much in one go, you can't take it out again. So uh, be careful as you add water. And that, ladies and gents, is the whiskey appreciation process. It's been a pleasure drinking with you. Look forward to your company next time. Cheers. Cheers.